Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Justin Riley of the Bama Standard. As many of you know, Alabama football lost one of its legends, former running back Amad Galloway. He passed away on January 9th, leaving many of us devastated, especially family and former teammates. Since then, I've thought of ways to honor his memory. When I first started my podcasting journey, Amad Galloway was actually one of my first interviews. I was able to recover parts of that interview from July 28th, 2020. Our sponsor, Workspace Solutions, and I have worked to put together a tribute using the audio from that interview. In addition, the Bama Standard will have a tribute show on January 24th at 6 p.m. Central on Touchdown Alabama Magazine's YouTube channel. It will include former teammates sharing stories and kind words. Any proceeds gained from this video and the tribute show will be donated directly to Ahmad's family. Thank you for your support, and please enjoy this six-minute interview with Ahmad. So you initially chose Notre Dame, but ultimately you chose Alabama. Of course, during that time, we were in a rebuilding period, and you, you decided to go with us over some big names, like you just mentioned, Notre Dame, Nebraska, Michigan, Florida, and they were really prevalent at that time. What made you feel like Alabama was the clear choice? Well, uh, Kendall Moorhead was a big time player out of the Memphis area. Um, we we knew each other of each other in high school. Eric Locke, my player out of Tennessee, he was my roommate as well. Uh, again, they're my best friend. Going, you know, really feel the deal. Uh, of course, when you get there, you look at the litany of running backs that have come through. Uh, I really felt like that was a place where, you know, if I was going to prove myself in the SEC, why not go to running back university? We did win the SEC championship in 1999, but I really want to kind of start focusing on when it was your time there. Uh, many felt that Sean Bohannon was going to be the next star in the backfield coming into that 2000 season. However, you quickly emerged as the feature back in the offense. And that was definitely apparent against Bandy that year when you rushed for 172 yards and touchdown how were you able to become the guy in the backfield that year well i just uh, you know at, at, at that point you know it's funny because you know as, as i was a junior in tennessee I, I always heard about this guy uh on the west of the east side of tennessee named Sam bohannon and then i get there and i'm playing with him um but uh, you know I, I, Sean, Sean, there was a time where bohannon sat out the spring uh, I think due to academic reasons, of which that was the time I won my second uh, spring MVP. And I just wanted to make a statement that year. Um, you know, uh, it, it's hard for, for, for me to allow a guy, <laughs> and we're, we're good friends, but it's hard for me to allow a guy to start in front of me that had been there all spring. No, I completely <laughs> understand that. Of course, you know, the expectations were pretty high for the 2000 season. You know, many experts believed we win, would win the national championship. Instead, things went horribly wrong. Not only did we not win the national title, but we finished with only three wins. In addition to that, Coach DeBose was let go. What do you feel went wrong that year? You know, you know what's ironic is when I when I look back at, at it statistically, I think that was my best season. It, uh, so I I, I I don't think it should have been we no longer have a son Alexander. I think it should have been well we have the next two hundred. And 20 round pound running back who's a dope walker semi finalist. Let's keep feeding him. I don't, I, I, you know, I, I just think our offense was game plan changed. Um, we had an electrifying player in Freddie Millen, but I, I don't think we were quite a five wide team. I do think we should have been more of a downhill running team. You know, in 2001, I remember walking out of the weight room at Old Aquatic Center after a workout, and I'd pass by the practice field pretty regularly. And for the first time in a long time, I really felt energy coming from the players. I heard y'all hollering and cheering each other on. What was that transition like from Mike DeBose to Coach Francione? Well, we, we, we were just uh, excited to have the expectation set upon us. Um, from, but at this time, it was from an outsider. Uh, and so even as an outsider, the expectation 
said a little higher, but they weren't, you know, SEC type standards, if, if you know what I mean. Mm hmm. And that season, you know, we had a lot of close losses, but I mean, I saw improvement game after game. But then the Iron Bowl happened at Jordan Hare. No one expected us to win. However, Andrew, Santonio, and you had a different plan. Matter of fact, y'all went off. We won, and we won 31 to 7. Can you describe that experience for all the listeners, especially those of us who really enjoyed that game? Yeah, I, I, at that time, our, our, our line was, was, you know, Wesley Fred and Justin Sons, those guys were starting to see a little bit. Um, and, and so they were firing off the ball, great run blockers. Um, but, it got, Lord, you know, the holes were there all night, uh, which, you know, uh, as we as we were able to get downhill and, and, and run the ball effectively that night, that opened up the passing game. Um, but, you know, I just, I just think we were, we were a scrappy team. We wanted to win. Uh, we came out. Uh, firing on all cylinders, um, you know, that night any any one of the four running backs in the stable could have could have uh, rushed for 100 or better. We were placed on probation and a bowl ban at that time. You know, even though the team was placed on probation, it seemed like it, it really didn't matter to you guys. You know, most programs would not have been motivated at that point. It wasn't that way for y'all. What kept that fire strong even though we couldn't play for anything other than pride? I mean, it, it, and that's you just said it. I mean, it is Alabama, uh, and so it's hard not to get up for a game when you're playing at Alabama. Uh, you know, uh, spring games are sometimes the most memorable games because we're trying to beat the snot out of each other and compete <laughs> yeah. for, for playing time and position. But when you're around that crowd, I mean, the energy that you feel, the, the love, the support. I mean, even coming off a three and eight season, I mean, you feel like you do owe the fans something. Who did you want to beat most, Alabama, Auburn or Tennessee? Ooh, Auburn. Who was faster, Santonio Beard, Sean Alexander, or you? Oh, my goodness, Antonio Beard by far. <laughs> oh, wow. I wasn't expecting that. He did have some wheels, though. <laughs> by, by two or three steps. All right, I got a question. I, I have been <laughs> waiting to ask this. Just – and it's from your buddy Marvin Constant. <laughs> <laughs> How many pet snakes died before you gave up on the dream of being a snake owner? <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, okay, we'll, we'll stop at we'll stop at four. <laughs> <laughs> I, ho I hope no one's listening.